the why Amazon, Microsoft Azure, or Google, Alibaba is so strong in a cloud computing market? That's a key question. Why? Because they have a very, very massive active user base, B2C applications. Amazon have a biggest e-commerce. Microsoft also have been providing personal, you know, office CDs in the cloud. Google have search engine, also YouTube. Alibaba, just like in Amazon, have the biggest, you know, e-commerce player in China. So that's the key point. Once you're gonna switch to, you know, the B2B applications, I'm Mr. Masa. So this time the investment review for the NEM NAM. And they used to be the token symbol was XEM, but now they you know update their blockchain entirely and then they have picked the new token symbol. It's actually they call it symbol. Okay, so let's start. So as usual, this is my portfolio strategy. They are, I only allocate my assets to the big older art coin, which is related to these six categories, one through six. Okay, and then today's you know now is category is here, the birth blockchain OS. Okay, and then as usual, so analytical points take the six points, starting from the pain points, product, team, execution power, token economy, and hype cycle. And then for the each, we're gonna I'm gonna take you know five points at the maximum level. So the total, the best score is 30 points, okay? Let's start from the pain point analysis. And the pain point analysis in related to the boss one is this one. So dApps need bursts for product developments in their early stages. And let me tell you why, okay? First things we need to understand about the current internet controlled by tech titans, such as Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple. But you know, in the blockchain space, it's sort of a different one because in the blockchain space, starting from the Bitcoin, all the you know those kind of infrastructure computing resources, you know, based on the peer-to-peer -peer based one, which means that every single node have their own free will join join this infrastructure network. So there is no person who can control this infrastructure. Okay, but. You know, most of like a DApps player, uh, usually we're gonna call it the blockchain player, have to build this kind of computer infrastructure, computing infrastructure by themselves. But actually, this is really, really tough work. So this is, you know, the token economy and the design matrix, which you know, I, I summarize one. And then here, you, in a blockchain application space, you can take, take you know, a little bit other elements, the things that you're gonna to build up an entire application infrastructure, starting from the real economy, security economy, network effects, and also like in this kind of computing resources here. So the boroughs, you know, who's gonna uh, taking care of like those kind of computing resources with the DAO based one, it's actually really, really helpful for the DAO play, blockchain application player who wants to build a massive user base, you know, in a blockchain space. Actually, this kind of completely similar things would happen in the past history of the internet. So we can learn from this. So this one, so, now, in 2006 to 2007, we're gonna experience the computing big one. There is like two key players to realize that this computing big one, first was in Amazon AWS, which is in a cross-related bus project. And the second was in Apple OS, actually smartphones. And because of these you know, two key player, we're gonna experience a massive amount of applications on an internet. And we're gonna experience this huge you know, market growth on the internet, second like a big bang more on big bang growth, you know, in the internet space. And why this kind of things that happens? First one related to this one. So before the AWS, all the like, Apple developer who wants to, you know, provide a new kind of web service or something, have to rent the data center in a monthly basis. The minimum cost in a monthly basis stuff for running these applications, usually three thousands to you know, five thousand dollars per month. It's not cheap. Okay? But once AWS newly come up with this market, and then what they're gonna, you know, did it as if for a great innovation happened here is actually they're gonna provide these computer resources, you know, in a second basis or minute basis or something. Then every single time app developer use their computer resources, you know, Amazon, AWS charge for that, that kind of you know usage with computer resources stuff. And usually once you know your user active user base for each application is pretty small, let's say one to ten active users or something, you know, the money you have to pay on a monthly base for the AWS is usually thirty dollars or fifty dollars or something. So much cheaper than you know renting a data center. 
So that is why you know, a lot of app developer is motivated enough to develop their own applications by using these cloud computing services. Okay? Apple newly invented the completely new you know, personal computer market, which is smartphone. And then, you know, this is a you know, huge, massive user base. They're going to new, new, you know, generate it in a global basis stuff. So this kind of you know, correlation together in you know, these two innovations, eventually we're going to experience a computer big one. And especially both, you know, very across these areas because those, you know, the blockchain applications who want to build that, you know, P2P company resource network to run and maintain their like application stuff like a social network or web browser or something can rely on this, you know, those computing resources and P2P network. So that's why they can rely on this kind of, you know, computing resources on the bus one, not the central cloud one, and which is really, really helpful. Okay, so that's a key point. And then this, based on this understanding, let's move to the next topic, product analysis. The first thing that we want to understand is the name kind of system overview. So this is a bus product. So as I explained before, so the bus is here and uh, there's a you know, DAPS here and the DAPS, if they want to use P2P computing resources, they're going to access to the bus and the, under the you know, bus management here, all like the computing resources, we, some, you know, we usually call the miner or validator join this network and they provide these computing resources and the you know, bus pay the fee for them to run the application stuff, okay? And then one, compared with Ethereum, one of the critical difference in you know, NEM is actually, you know, NEM's new blockchain platform, you know, NEM's Catapulto is a permission blockchain based one. It's a very different from the public blockchain one because Ethereum is a public blockchain and the NEM is a permission blockchain. And then, you know, critical difference, actually the one of the biggest difference between public blockchain and private blockchain is that the, in this permission blockchain software birth system, the validator or node here is actually controlled by you know birth system itself by NAM. So NAM can pick up which node should join the next like you know computing resources stuff. Okay, so you know in you know, Ethereum or Bitcoin, those are you know public blockchain based one. You know any kind of node can f and free to join then you know computing resources network stuff. But you know NAM is different. And then the one of the critical benefits that NAM can get through this in permission blockchain one based one is the scalability. It's much easier you know, for them to control the scalability of the software itself with the permission blockchain one. So they, they want to differentiate and from the Ethereum to provide bus platform software solutions to their clients. Okay, that is why. But the basic philosophy of the blockchain itself is a public one, you know, fully decentralized one. So you know to me it's not so attractive enough to think about those kind of software framework here. Okay? Because of all the things that permission blockchain want. Okay. And the other thing is usually uh, we need to understand about you know a uh, difference between central crowd and a decentral crowd is this one. So you know usually once we're gonna call the you know crowd computing services, they mainly have three components. One is a transactions system, and second is a storage system, and third one the analytic system. Okay. And a decentralized crowd system, we usually call bus, is actually here, only about the transactional system. And why we call that way? Because the blockchain technology is purely actually a transactional system. They don't care about the you know, storage services, they don't care about the analytical system. So once we're gonna, you know, compatible or you know, competitive enough to compete with the central crowd computing system here, you know, they need to expand their you know, feature and the functionality here about to the storage fun functions and the analytical function here. So that's, you know, it's better to remember that in long term, which is kind of very you know competitive point to compete with an you know, existing central squad here. Okay. And then based on this understanding, as Jojo, and we're gonna move to the value cap with the proportion analysis stuff too. And then I pick up the three major bars here, Ethereum, EOS, and Tron. The things I have to say is actually name, especially compared with these three major verse, they don't have a not so strong cutting edge point here. Because you know, when you look at the fast move advantage, Ethereum the world first, you know, the bus project other player cannot ever take this kind of advantage, then NEM, NEM you know, didn't have that one too. Because you know, one of the reasons, NEM is kind of very old you know, blockchain project you know, in, a, in a blockchain industry, but why they can you know, get you know, this kind of fast, fast move advantage? Because NEM is actually started for the purity of cryptocurrency, just like Ripple or like Litecoin, something like that way. So they're gonna pivot it from like cryptocurrency project to the bus project to differentiate, you know, to survive in the market, especially the Bitcoin is the biggest player in a cryptocurrency project. That's why, okay? And then to compete with Ethereum, to build the very competitive DApps ecosystem on their own is very, very critical. But unfortunately, NEM doesn't have that kind of like strong application yet, especially compared with Tron. Because compared, Tron is taking a very vertical with a process transition model. 
So they have you know, very attractive and scalable applications such as BitTrend, also DLive, but the NAND doesn't take that kind of vertical strategy yet. So that is why you know, they are kind of you know, weak positioning here too. So but simply say, think about the you know, future scalability stuff too. All the bus projects have the transaction system stuff. So one of the cutting edge point, the DPoS model here, it's kind of you know, because, because still Ethereum does not take the you know, proof of stake model system yet. So that is why that would be you know, only cutting edge point to compete with other bus projects in the market. Okay. Then eventually, you know, this kind of you know very pro proportional analysis, as you can see here, you know, compared with other major bus project, you know, them that does not have like any kind of like a cutting edge here as a result either. Because you know, this is in a comparison between like you know top you know bus project in the blockchain space. And the orange is you know, about you know bus you know market cap itself, and the blue is you know all the like, DApps project which is running on the specific blockchain. The Ethereum, they have a lot of like you know, very scalable and a big potential application such as MakerDAO or Brave Browser, then NAM do not have this kind of a clear application on their platform. So it's kind of weak positioning here. Okay. And then here are the things. So one of the reasons like you know NAM wants to switch from public blockchain based one to the you know private blockchain based one, then there is a re an aspect reason that they want to survive in the market. And uh, you know, my prediction is for this in their software business and open stuff, they want to focus on B2B application market. And then some people say this could be a you know, high potential in long term, but I, I don't think so. And then let me tell you why. This one. So again, we can learn from like, you know, crowd computing market, internet space. And then this is like in you know, a crowd computing market in 2019 and the data from Statista. And then these are the top player in the crowd, central crowd computing space. Now Amazon, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, you know, these are the biggest players here. They already take like 57% in the market share. Okay. And then Alibaba Cloud, Salesforce, IBM, and others here. Okay. And then the why Amazon, Microsoft Azure, or Google, Alibaba is so strong in a cloud computing market? That's a key question. Why? Because they have a very, very massive active user base b2 c applications amazon have a biggest e-commerce microsoft also have been providing personal you know office cities in the crowd google have search engine also youtube alibaba just like in amazon have the biggest you know e-commerce play in china so that's the key point once you're going to switch to the, you know the b2b applications actually of course they can you know survive in the market that but eventually it's gonna be a niche player in a crowd computing system. Because those applications is only about the B2B stuff, is a huge disadvantage to compete with, you know, these B2C you know, application player here for the crowd computing business stuff. And then let me explain why. So this is in a chasm theory. Most of the time we're gonna use it for the B2B, you know, tech marketing stuff. So here's like, you know, innovator, early adapter, and chasm, early majority, late majority, and logo. This is the best, you know, product life cycle, starting from, you know, every single new technology starting to use in this innovator and used by, you know, early adapter here, then, you know, crossing the chasm, they're going to move to like early majority user base. It's pretty big one. And then late majority player, like then these, you know, user base is pretty conservative player. They don't want to touch any kind of new technology immediately. Okay. But in this, I like, kind of, usually we're going to apply this one for the, you know, B2B marketing stuff. But to me, we can apply for this stuff for the, you know, B2B, B2C application business stuff in crowd computing because you know crowd computing is a B2B2C business because you know if they can have like a very massive you know scalable B2C applications you know their computing resources requirements also like a massive level right so then you know here in this category we're going to say like you know usually B2C applications is much better than B2B applications because it's related to the you know decision making stuff you know, blockchain application is also cutting edge, you know, new technology stuff. Then consumer can make the, their own decisions, you know, whether they want to use the application or not on their own, just single decision making process. But B2B applications, it's not like that way. They have a lot of stakeholders inside. So all the decision making process, you know, processed by like a multiple player inside, some are innovator, some are early adopter, or some are majority, or sometimes, you know, you know, late majority or laggard in the management level or something, they're going to need to struggle to sell their software, you know, for those people inside of organizations. So naturally, B2C, B2B applications, you know, tractions, growth, use active user base growth is much slower than 
B2B application and B2C applications like here. So that's the things we can see from here. The Salesforce, IBM, these two players is provide cloud computing system for the B2B applications. Okay, this is very important. So even in the past, lack space in a major data center player tried to get into the cloud computing market, but they also completely defeated by Amazon because you know lack space used to be kind of very big player in cloud computing, but completely defeated by Amazon because that lack space all the time focused on the B2B application market. So completely defeated by Amazon because Amazon all the time focused on the B2C application market. Okay, so that's the things we can learn from the you know, past history in the, in the cloud computing system stuff. So we, I would say we can apply the same things that would happen in a bus project market too, based on the chasm theory. Okay, that's what I'm to, you know, I want to understand here, right? And the third one, team analysis. And then I pick up the five key member here, the start from Jeff. So he, before starting of the you know, name project, he used to be the assistant professor of the English class in the South, you know, South Korea. Okay? So he's not the professional entrepreneur for the tech space. And then Ravi, also kind of, you know, he's a senior software engineer, the technical lead at the name project. Also, he, before I joined the name project, he used to be a technical lead at you know, Zafin, Malaysian tech team. Also, you know, get the, the BS of the computer information system at you know, Ragara College in Canada. And the Sada guy lady, and he's a CFO, ex financial controller at the Hopi Australia, and also he got the master degree of the accounting at the Chartered Accounting in Australia and in New Zealand. Okay, and the fourth guy, Kyleen, the co-founder and the general manager for the name, you know, kind of venture capital firm, a venture capital arm, you know, name Ventures, and he used to be kind of serious, he's a serial tech entrepreneur. He used to be a CTO at the Soro Energy, and the fifth guy, Mervin. So he's a Taiwan representative. So like in the name, you know, they you know, all the time hiring the, each country representative to develop their own in you know, a community on their own in each regional or you know, country based one. So, but this kind of hiring approach is a pretty accurate one because you know, it's much easier for them to build an ecosystem in a country region based one and the annual or quarterly basis, they can, you know, the world conference event or something. That'd be, you know, that'd be a nice marketing approach. Okay. Then, you know, number four, execution power analysis. Then the things that you know, kind of you know, I have to say here is you know this is the, all the data from Dubs.com, and the system focus on the B2B application market, so we cannot confirm these data here to you know compare with Ethereum, Tron, and EOS. And the same thing is actually about you know category stuff too. So I know that they are so seriously trying to get the you know, B2B blockchain application stuff too, but I think you know, I have to say here it takes much time compared with you know acquiring B2C application player in a brass project, such as a Brave Browser or like a Dent okay, or something, okay? And then fifth one, token economy analysis. And about the token economy analysis, you know, BAS is categorized here. Okay, so the key thing is, you know, security economy and the governance down here. And the things I want to tell you here about name project is this is the network effect on a Tron TRX, and it's kind of good learning for how we can understand about the potential of the name project. So Tron to compete with Ethereum, they have the you know, biggest growth project and also the fast move advantage here. They're gonna take the vertical product strategy, and to me it's quite accurate way because they have the you know, D Live here on Tron and also Bitrend here, and they're gonna connect it to each other. And then you know D Live is a live streaming services and also recorded video services just like YouTube. So those like, you know, game live streamer, which is one of the very popular video contents on a YouTube space. So which is actually related to Tron's, you know, game dApps, you know, development, you know, ecosystem stuff here. So it's, you know, related to each other, okay? Then once they're gonna develop a lot of the gaming application stuff, it's more like, you know, requirements for providing you know, streaming services on a DLive because a lot of like you know game arriving streaming is happening here so BTD you know speed demand you know it's increasing so like you know, a lot of like my validator in a BTT network can make money so that's why they're gonna provide more like you know, streaming resources here so that is why you know DLive can maintain more like, stable streaming experiences for the you know, customer which is also better customer experiences right so these are kind of tri triangle relationships here and especially the game category in the bus project is very critical 
you know, why I think so, because when you look at Ethereum, you know, in future NFT will be the kind of key driver for the growth for the continuous growth in long term. And all the, you know, major NFT markets was coming up from the gaming categories. So that is why, you know, this strategy perfectly makes sense to me. But about when you look at the NAM, they don't have this kind of, you know, product portfolio yet. Okay, so that is why to compete with major you know, three bus project, Ethereum, Tron, and EOS, NAM is not so strong enough to compete with them. Okay. And then governance DAO system. So it's now very, very critical because you know Ethereum is so aggressively developing their DAO mechanism a lot. Then about them, actually they're you know, doing a pretty good work because for example, you know, they're gonna update the, their blockchain platform, the Cataparto, and then to pick up their symbol, you know, term, and my image, it's, it's gonna be you know, called we got a symbol, and it's kind of a little bit diff difficult to explain about the detail stuff to here. But anyway, so they're gonna you know, take the voting mechanism to choose their new sim you know, ticker symbol, token symbol, from XCM to symbol. So this kind of you know, a continuous activity on efforts is very critical to develop their idea of their system in long term. Okay? And then number six, hype cycle analysis. This is as usual, hype cycle for the blockchain business in 2019 from Gartner. And the category we can put up for the you know, NAM project is here. First one in blockchain, every single bus project related to blockchain here. And since they're gonna also take like, you know, try to develop a like DeFi project here, also DAO mechanism here, so you know, smart assets, and also like, you know, DAO mechanism here, which is also related to NAM project. And then most importantly, they focus on the permission blockchain based one. That is why, you know, distributed ledger is also, you know, related to their business stuff. Okay. But these two category is actually more in the mature the growth phase, you know, or real market adaptation here. So think about the long term potential, especially like, you know, moonshot growth or something. It's kind of hard to, you know, take that kind of opportunity here because they already, you know, across the, you know, this kind of, you know, rapid growth, growth moment. So it's still up to them that whether they can develop more like an attractive, like a smart asset platform or something to compete with Ethereum will be kind of critical because Ethereum will have a lot of like, you know, you know, interesting and scalable, like an amazing, you know, DeFi project on top of their, you know, bus platform. That's why, okay? In the total comprehensive variations, the things we can say on an M is like this one. So about the pain points, you know, without any doubt, it's 5.0 because the bus is a very, very critical industry layer for the blockchain industry, okay? And the next one is, you know, product, I have to say 3.50 because they don't have any kind of a scalable in a storage system, an article system to compete with EOS yet. And then they don't have, you know, a fast move advantage. So uh, my, from this, you know, an article point, you know, I have to say 3.5 will be enough. And about team actually, you know, in tech team is, you know, I think it's good. But for the you know, business side, they don't have any kind of very cutting edge, you know, competitive player inside here there. So I have to say it's 3.0. So that is why when you look at the execution power, since they cannot compete, they cannot, you know, fairly compete with, you know, Tron, EOS, or, you know, Ethereum. So that is why the result or traction they're going to make last you know, three, three years or so was, you know, that's, that's not so a dark one. So I have to say 3.0 will be enough. And about token economy, I also set the 3.0 here because like, as I said, Ethereum has a you know, huge network effect with their, you know, DApps ecosystem stuff. And then to compete with Ethereum and try and take the vertical strategy here. But now doesn't have anything, you know, like that way, like that model yet. So that is why I set the 3.0 here, okay? And hype cycle still it's up, up to them. But when you think about, you know, only purely bus project potential, also then the distributed project potential, as I said, it's a B2B application based target will be kind of very normal approach. It takes time to develop one. So which means that it's not so attractive to see the you know, long-term potential in a DLT market when you see the analogy from the internet. So that is why I said the 3.50 here. So the total score is 21, okay? So uh, you know, my minimum criteria for the investment is you know, 25 points, so still under the score. So I still but keep my expectation to their project that they're gonna do some kind of very you know great approach to improve their traction stuff or token economy or technical development stuff too. But now it's not the right time to invest in them at this moment. Okay, so that's my final answer for this. Okay. So that is all this time. So I also make a lot of interesting video about the crypto space and blockchain stuff. So uh, so thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Bye.